This is a 2003 Honda Foreman 450 uh, and the fan was not working. So I went through, diagnosed it, fixed it. And I figured I'd do a quick video on where some of the parts are, how to better isolate it, and just kind of show you how it works. Uh, one thing, I did set this up so that I can actually show you how the system should work if everything is working properly. I've rigged it up with a little sensor and all this stuff, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, just so you know, the uh, fan control module is underneath the uh, left front fender. It's kind of in the center, actually, but it's in a rubber boot. It's pretty easy to get to. You pop it out, and that is the fan control module. But that's not the first thing I would go to. I'm just kind of showing you where it is. But um, over here on the back right fender, back, yeah, the back rear right fender, I should say, whatever, there is a connector. Whoops, right here. And that goes to the temp sensor. Um, what I did was I had two jumpers connected to this so that I could show you uh, a couple of differences. But so this wire right here connects down to the male side of it. Um, it's kind of tucked in there a little bit. It's not that hard to get to. But that wire right there is basically acting as a jumper from this connector down to the temp sensor, which is located down under the back of the engine on the right side. Um, there is the footwell, and you can see it down there. Or, if you have the skid plate off, it's located right there. Like I say, it's got basically what amounts to a jumper wire going from the sensor back to that connector. And um, so, what I was gonna do was, I put two jumpers, I put two jumpers onto this one wire. Just, you don't need two of them. I'm just doing that so I can show you how it works if you jump it and how it works when the system's operating normally. Um, what I was gonna do was uh, show you if you take that black jumper or the one that I have set up that I want to jump uh, straight to ground I'll show you what it does when you do that. Basically, turn the key on, your light, well, yeah, your uh, overheat light illuminates, and it just sits there. But if you take this and jump it to ground, what that does is, completes the circuit to ground, runs the fan, and the actual overheat light is on. So, we know that the system works other than the temp sensor down there. That's what I found was the problem. Uh, but the easiest way to complete the whole circuit is by disconnecting that wire and putting it to ground. If the fan kicks on, <coughs> excuse me, then you have a really good idea that the rest of the system is good. If you were to jump that to ground and nothing happens, then you're going to have to start to isolate it, whether it's the fan, a bad, a broken wire, bad connection, the fan control module, something, you know, along those lines. Uh, if you're looking for the fan wires, obviously you'd have to remove the gas tank. And underneath this little flap is your two wires. A blue and a green. Uh, that side drops straight down to the fan right here. And if you were to uh, take a battery with two little jumper wires, you could put power straight to the side that goes to the fan and test that. It's pretty simple. If the fan kicks on, well, you know, your problem is elsewhere. Whether it's the temp sensor, the fan control module, broken wire, you know, something else. But, um, what I was going to do was show you how the system should work when it's uh, not broken, when it's normal, basically. <clears throat> and what we have here is an actual temp sensor. 
This one's actually still good. I had it, I figured I'd show you how it's supposed to work. What I did was jumped to the outside of it, which is actually the side that contacts the oil and is warmed up. And if that sensor is good, it's normally open. So when it finally heats up, it's gonna close the circuit, ground, you know, make it ground basically, uh, through that wire, which is completing the circuit back to this wire and turning the whole fan uh, system on and whatnot. But what I was gonna show you was, I took it, <clears throat> clamped it with a set of vice grips and just kind of set it on this rubber boot um, just so it's not grounding. And what I did was cleaned up the bolt right here a little bit. And that little prong, which would be the side that your wire joins onto and is running back to that connector, what I did was just set it on the bolt. So when I warm this up, you're gonna see how the system should work. Um, where is that? Hold on one second, I'm gonna set this down. Uh, the key is already on. You can see the neutral light. When I start to warm this sensor up, which I know it's better if it's in oil, but guess what? That's not easy to do. So, as I warm this up, the fan's gonna kick on. Then I'm gonna show you something else. It takes a minute because it needs to get extremely hot. Oh. Yeah. I just had to move it and make a better ground because <clears throat> it must have got moved a little bit. But So you can see what that's doing is the sensor got hot. It's grounding internally through that little prong back to ground running the fan circuit. You can see the fans running. You can hear it. We're going to wait until that cools off. Just so you know, the overheat light is not on. Oh, there it goes. You can hear the fan just went off. I'm gonna show you something now. If I continue to heat this up, the fan is gonna come on. This is kinda hard to do by yourself. There's the fan. Fan is on. And the overheat light is off so what I'm gonna do is I've got the flame on the sensor right now and I'm gonna keep warming it up until the overheat light comes on I know there's been some up oh, there it is I know there's been some confusion on whether or not that should be on as soon as the fan comes on it should not so what I'm gonna do is shut the heat off Oh, there goes the overheat light went off. The fan is still running. And as soon as that sensor cools down enough, it's going to shut the fan off. If you're trying to diagnose this, obviously you don't need one of these sensors connected the way I have it. I only did this to show you how the system should operate. Um, basically, like I said, one of the first things you want to do is pretty much go back to that connector, put it to ground, see if the rest of the system comes on as far as the fan, the light, all that stuff. If it doesn't, then that's when you're gonna have to go through and start figuring out the problem, whether it's the fan, the temp sensor, fan control module, wires, all that stuff. So 
Anyway, hopefully this clarifies how the system should work and where some of the stuff is located. Thanks.